Hello, and welcome to the very first Stat Quickie. Stat Quickies are a little sh short video, it's not a full-on Stat Quest, where it's only going to take a few minutes, where we address a question that someone's asked me in the comments, or sent me an email, or if I just ran into someone in the hallway and they said, hey, I got a question. So uh, that's what Stat Quickies are for. Uh, this very first one, we're going to talk about what a good threshold for significance is. People often ask me, uh, is 0 0.05 the best threshold for significance? Uh, should I use it for everything all the time, no matter what? Uh, or are there exceptions? Or what? What? How do I deal with this? Okay. So what I'm going to talk about is one. The original threshold of 0 0.05 was randomly selected. Well, not not necessarily randomly, but it's relatively arbitrary. There's no biological or natural reason that 0 0.05. Uh, is the optimal threshold for significance. It's the one that we use mostly in science, uh, in publications and whatnot. We've been used it for a long time, and for the most part, it does an okay job. Uh, lately, there have been some high-profile uh, articles about people doing p-hacking and kind of getting away with murder in terms of statistics, but for the most part, 0 0.05 has been sort of a good way to hedge the bets. 5% of the time you're wrong, but 95% of the time you're right. And that seems to be a cost-effective threshold for most of at least biological science. Okay, so now let's talk about what good thresholds are other than 0 0.05. Okay, so if you've got uh, data that you're going to publish, um, you've done your analysis, you're going to publish it, what's a good threshold for that? Well, almost always 0 0.05 is a great threshold for that because that's what the editors are expecting. That's what the reviewers are expecting. If you can go below that, that's awesome. Okay, but there are exceptions to that. And uh, before you run off, let's listen to all those exceptions because sometimes it needs to be smaller. Um, and we're going to get to that in just a second. Okay, so here's another threshold for significance that we're going to talk about. One is when you're not necessarily going to publish the data, you've say like you've downloaded a data set from the internet, you've got a hypothesis that seems reasonable, you've tested that hypothesis, the p-value is not 0.05, okay? It's a little bit higher, okay? Is that a bad thing? Well, it depends on what you're going to do. If you're going to publish immediately, yes, you want it to be lower than 0.05, but if instead you're just using this limited data set that you got off the internet for free, uh, and you're just trying to test some basic hypothesis that you're later going to confirm or validate using alternative methods, well, in that case, who cares what the p-value is? As long as it's kind of small, that's good enough. You don't need a massively tiny p-value when you're just exploring some data set that you found, you're generating new hypotheses that you're later going to test and validate using all additional data and additional methods, okay? So if that's the case, uh, you know, don't, don't feel like you have to stick to 0.05, okay? Now, here's another thing you need to think about. Say, like, you've done your... <laughs> it looks like I just got a text message. Right, next time I do this, I'm going to turn off, uh, I guess, alerts or something like that. Okay, so uh, what's the next thing we need to talk about? We need to talk about the effect size. Okay, say, like, you did an R-squared, and I've got a whole stack quest on R-squared, so check this out because I go into this in detail. But say, like, you did an R-squared, and your R-squared value is, isn't very good. Okay, you've got, like, a, you know you know, R squared of 10%, right? That means that 10% of the variation in the data is explained by whatever it is you're interested in. That's not very much, okay? So even if you have a tiny, 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 tiny p-value, okay, uh, it doesn't actually matter. Unless, you know, in certain circumstances, maybe that's good enough. But generally speaking, you want a good R squared. You want, your, you want a good correlation. You want whatever you're studying to, to explain the data, okay? And, <clears throat> and so if you have a tiny p-value and a tiny effect size and not much explanation of what's going on, then uh, who cares how small your p-value is? You know, I've seen these things in publications where the p-value is 0.0000001, but the R-squared is horrible. And I say, who cares, okay? So you want to have a decent effect size, okay? So a small p-value is not enough, okay? One last thing, okay? Extraordinary claims need extraordinary data. So say like you've done a great experiment, 
proving that there are extraterrestrials flying around New York City in UFOs. Okay, that's that's an extraordinary claim. Okay, but you've done your thing and you've got a p-value less than 0 0.05. It's 0 0.047. Okay, it's less than that threshold of significance. Is that good enough? Absolutely not. Extraordinary claims need extraordinary data. If you're going to go out and publish a thing saying extraterrestrials are flying around New York City in UFOs, your p-value better be so crazy small, it's unbelievable. And then people say, well, that p-value is so small, I can't even believe it. Therefore, I have to believe that there are extraterrestrials flying around New York City in UFOs. Okay, that's it. So uh, to summarize, if you're publishing your p-values, you want a small p-value. A, p a threshold of 0.05 is okay unless you're, the thing you're studying only explains a little bit and your R-squared is kind of crummy. You want a good R-squared. Okay, so uh, it's, you know, 0.05 is fine if, you're, if you've got a good correlation. Um, if you're just using it, uh, doing statistical stuff, just to explore stuff that you're going to validate later on, uh, who really cares what your threshold is? You're just trying to go find something of interest. Don't worry about 0.05. And the other thing is, extraordinary claims require extraordinary data. If you're going to say that there are extraterrestrials flying around New York City in UFOs, you better have a darn small p-value. All right, tune in next time for our next stat quickie.